Hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter seven is World Series Champions. All right, so if you have downloaded the source code from the from this book's companion website, you will find a file named World Series Winners.txt in the chapter seven folder. This file contains a chronological list of the World Series winning teams from 1903 through 2009. The first line in the file is the name of the team that won in 1903, and the last line in the, is the name that is the name of the team that won in 2009. Note that the World Series was not played in 1904 or 1994. Write a program that lets the user enter the name of the team and then displays the number of times that team has won the World Series in the time period from 1903 uh, through 2009. And it says you can access the book's component website at uh, this website here. All right, so it gives us a tip and says, Read the contents of the World Series winners.txt file into a list. When the user enters the name of the team, the program should step through the list, counting the number of times the selected team appears. <clears throat> okay, so as I mentioned in the past videos, I didn't buy the... Basically, I bought the book from Amazon and it didn't come with these uh, these files. But I, I searched online for a while and I found a list of, of these names. Either way, if you don't have that list, you can. it doesn't matter. The point is to write a program that can go through any list of teams. Um, and when the user enters a team name, it tells, you know, it gives back how many times that team has won, or basically how many times that team appears in the list that uh, is in the file. It doesn't matter. So you can have uh, any list in the, in the file. And the program we're about to write will still work with it. All right, so let's start. Um, I have the text. I, I copied it, so I have it copied um, in my clipboard. I'm just uh, I just have to paste it now. What it means is I need to create a text file and paste it. Before that, I'm going to save the program first. I'm going to save it. I'm going to try to um, do that. So save selected files. I'm going to save it where we normally save our programs. In the chapter seven folder, I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call it. World Series Champions. And I'm going to save this program as the same thing, World Series Champions of the Pi. <coughs> Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is to create a file and then paste in the list of teams I copied online. So I'm going to open my text editor. On Mac, it's going to be text editor. I'm going to use text editor. You can use any text editor you, you're comfortable with. If you're using text editor, sorry, text edit, I'll just hit new document. Make sure that your preferences, in your preferences, it's set to plain text, not rich text, because rich text has some extra formatting behind the scenes. You don't see it. But when you save your file and you try to write programs to read through it, it, it may not be accurate. So plain text is what you have to set it to. And I'm going to paste it. I told you I have, co I have it copied, so I'm going to paste it now. And, and you know, this is the list that I, I got. It, it's probably, it's maybe correct sometimes. You know, it's, it's also possible that it's not correct. But like I said, I mentioned earlier, any list um, of teams sh should work for this program. All right, so I'm going to save this. As before, let me just go back a little bit. I'm going to save it as World Series winners.txt. So save, I'm going to save it in the same location where the programmers the reason why I do that I'm going to do that is because when I save it in that same location when I'm opening the file all I have to do is specify that file name without any path because it's in the same location just the file name will work but if you don't save your file where your program is then you have to specify the full path of where the file is to the program in order to have access in order so that your program can have access to your file so I'm going to save it in the same place where we saved our program which is world series champions this is our program world series of World Series Champions the Pi. I'm going to save this file as World Series Winners TXT. So World Series Winners TXT. So this is our file. I'm going to have it open just for reference. <coughs> Sorry about that. So the program gave us a hint. It said, "Read the contents of the World Series Winners TXT file into a list." So let's do that. I want us to break our program into functions. And the first function I want to create, or we should create, is a function that's going to read all the team names from this file into a list. Okay, I'm going to define a function. I'm going to call it 
Reed, it's going to be a long name. Reed, um, winning team names, okay, from file to list. It's a long name. I know it's a long name. But as you probably know, I like using long names, uh, very de extremely descriptive names, just to help me make sure that uh, everything is uh, um, logical, everything is, I can understand everything. But you can use any name that you're comfortable with. We have to determine if this function, or we have to find, uh, decide if this function is going to accept any argument so we can uh, define some parameters. So we'll do that if, if, we, end, if, we, end up, if we end up finding out that it needs arguments. So the first thing we want to do is open a file. And the file is going to be the world series winners.txt. So I'm going to call the open function. The open function takes in a couple of arguments. It takes in the file name of the file you want to open. And the next argument is going to be what mode you're opening the file in. So first is going to be the file name. But I want us to create this so that whoever is calling this function has to provide that file name. And so I'm going to define a parameter up here. That parameter, I'm going to call it file name. So whatever file name is provided, we're going to use it as a file name of the file to open. The next argument of the open function is going to be, sorry, it's going to be what mode we want to open this file in. So in double quotations, I'm going to type in R. That means we want to read, open this file in read mode. We want to read from it. You can use double quotations or single quotations. Now when you open a file, it's going to create a file object in memory. The open function is going to return the memory address, okay, of that file object that we just or was just created. And so when it's returning that memory address, we need a place to store it. And so over here, I'm going to create a variable that's going to store the reference address, okay, of that file object that was just created. I'm going to call this file or this variable um, winning teams file. So winning teams file is going to be the variable that's going to hold that, re that reference uh, address of this file object. In, in a way, this variable here is going to point to that file object. All right. The first thing I want to do is I want to read the first line from this file. So I'm going to do that by referring to the file object or the variable that, that points to that file object. And I'm going to call a method. A method is really just a function that belongs to an object. This is the variable that uh, refers to that file object. And this the function is called readLine, but in this case it's a method. Right? So I'm going to call readLine. And anytime you call readLine, <coughs> it reads the current line. So anytime you're trying to read from a file, there's something called a read position. By default, the read position starts from the beginning of the file. So by default, it's right here before the B. So when you call read line, it's going to read the entire line, what's on the entire line, and return that data. It's going to return it. Now when it returns it, we need a place to store it, right? And so whatever is returning is going to be a particular team name, winning team, uh, winning team. And so I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it winning team. Winning team is going to store that winning team. So when you call read line, it's going to read that line and return it. But after it's done, it's going to adjust the read position from the end of that line to the next line, to the beginning of the next line. And it's going to wait. <coughs> so the read position will stay there and wait for you until you call read, until you call read line again. And it's going to read the, read the next line and adjust the read position from the end of that line to the next line and wait for you until you call read line again. So it waits. You have to keep calling read line for the read position to be adjusted. So the first thing we are doing is we are reading the first line. Assuming the program is just starting. Read the first line, we store it here. Now, when it returns something, that means that, of course, there's something in the file. But when you call read line, let's say it hits the end of the line. If you call read line and it returns nothing, it returns an empty string, that means that it's hit the end of the file. Okay, in other words, if you call read line and it returns an empty string, it means there's nothing in the file. Or, or it's done reading items for, or lines from the file. So in that case, you've, end, you've reached the end of the file, or it's empty. So we want to check, because right now we can see that there are names in the, in the file. 
but in the future we may not even see the you know, these names we may not even see the file we, we, our job may be just to write a program that reads the file and now and the file name will be provided so we want to first make sure that what we've read is not empty or that file is not empty so when we've read the first line which is you know Boston, Boston Americans we want to make sure that well it doesn't matter what it is when we read the first line we want to make sure that value whatever is stored in the winning team variable it's not empty okay so I'm going to create a while loop. while what's stored in winning team okay is not equal to I'm using the exclamation sign and the equal equal sign no space this means not exclamation sign means not equal to so not equal to while the winning, what's stored in the winning team is not equal to an empty string so this is an empty string this is a space okay this is a space and this is an empty string the string with nothing in it while it's not equal to an empty string, remember, if you call readLine and it returns an empty string, that means there's nothing in the file or, or, or it reached the end of the file. <coughs> Sorry. So while it's not equal to an empty string, this is if it's not equal to an empty string, that means it contains something. So while it contains something, while it's not equal to an empty string, what we want to do is we want to append, okay, we want to append that name to a list. What, what we want to do is basically continue storing those names, those team names, into a list, which means we need a list. So up here I'm going to create a list. I'm going to call it winning teams list. Initially it's going to be an empty list. So over here while we've checked to make sure that the winning team is not equal to an empty string, what we want to do is we want to append that winning team, whatever is stored in there, into the winning teams list. So I'm going to refer to that list, so winning teams list dot append. And what do we want to append to this list? We want to append the content of winning team. Okay, so I'm appending the content of winning team. Now when we are done, I'm going to so we read the first line over here. We check to make sure that it's not it's not equal to an empty string. We check to make sure there's something in there. If there's something in there, this while loop will, will, will run. And so we append that name to winning teams list. Now remember I mentioned that after reading the first line, it adjusts the read position from the end of this line to the next line. And wait for you to call read line again. So after doing that, after calling read line for the first time, we call read line again in the while loop. This is just the very first time. Now the loop is going to keep iterating. We use we use what's stored in winning team, we append it to the list, and then we call read line again. So it's going to be winning teams file I'm referring to the file okay and I call read line again what will, what will, what will end up happening is it's going to read the next line and adjust the read position from the end of that line to the next line and wait for you to call read line again before it reads the next line and so when it reads the next line we need a place to store it again so it's going to be just like this line we need a place to store it I'm going to store it back in the same variable winning team this is the loop this is the, just the very first line we read we check that and now we now we're in the loop. Keep iterating. This loop will keep iterating while winning team is not equal to an empty string, which means it contains something. So we append to the list and we read the next line. We check to see if it's not nothing. Right? If it's not an empty string. If it's not an empty string, we append to the list, we read the next line. <coughs> so basically by the time this loop is done, we'll have all the names appended to the to the list all the team names are pinned to the list but at any point if the win if the what's stored in the winning team variable is an empty string then this loop will be will, will be exited or will, yeah it won't run it will stop running and whatever is whatever is below it okay outside the loop whatever is below it will, will execute this loop will only work or will only keep running when what's stored in winning team is not equal to an empty string okay so outside the loop when it's done Appending all the names, team names to the list, we want to go ahead and, and return what's stored in winning team's list. And we're done with this function. So this function is just going to take all the names stored in the file and append all of them to the list. <coughs> Seems like we have a variable here. Uh, sorry, an, an error here. Let's see what it is. Syntax error. So let's just make sure. Okay, so I'm just... Uh, I, I typed in return g instead of return. Okay, so we're done with this function.